Hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is Melissa here. I'm a marketing specialist at Encore. And uh, today we'll be talking about Power BI with Dynamics 365 Business Central. And we've got Ziad and Pierre today. Hi there. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, everyone. My name is Ziad. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today we've got some very interesting topics to talk about. One that I think would be very interesting for your business as well as an, a, a good addition to or integration to your existing solutions. Um, today we'll be talking about Power BI and all of the different components or at least a high level fundamental introduction to Power BI and how it can integrate um, seamlessly with Dynamics 365 Business Central, an ERP solution. Um, so for today, we're, we're going to run through a quick introduction around how you can create or share or, or some of the advantages of the Power BI dashboards in general and use those really as building blocks to kind of show the fuller story of how it can you know, be meaningful and add value to your business. And, and near the end of our presentation today, we'll also have a, a demonstration to show you uh, the, the concept of Power BI as well as how it's um, it's it's integrated or a part of uh, Dynamics Business Central as well. To kick off, though, I wanted to kind of set the the tone for today and really kind of outline the the value of what we're about to discuss. So, you know, in the world that we live in, the unprecedented world that uh, and the changes that have kind of occurred, we've re we've seen that over the years um, there's been you know uh, a, a decrease in the average lifespan of a company that that is on the S and P 500 list, and and you know. Uh, you know, dozens of years ago, um, that used to there used to be a lot of you know an average of 67 years, if you will, of um, companies that are there uh, on that list. However, in the 2020s and moving forward, we're seeing a continuous decline in how long in a, a company can actually stay on that list. And in fact, it has to do a lot with the ability for a company to be able to translate their data uh, into meaningful context um, for the organization as well as for its customers. So with that in mind, another stat is that 70% of organizations believe that their data is actually not being used to the fullest. And then on the contrary to the last trend, this number constantly is going higher and higher. So more and more companies companies are realizing that there's a lot of data at hand, but we don't really know what we need to do with that data to make it meaningful uh, for our, our um, users. So this idea of data culture is one that is kind of emerging and continuously growing as it develops, uh, as organizations develop strategies around creating a data culture, where, which is basically an environment uh, for every team member or users or individuals that can essentially be empowered to do really, really great things with their data being at their fingertips. And and that's not a problem anymore. We've got so much data, but now we need to build a culture where everyone can benefit. Uh, everyone in that organization perhaps can ask questions and get answers frequently, as well as they can be effective um, in the organization become innovative, have business insights, have a self-service portal perhaps, have the ability to visualize the data and instead of just you know cleaning and bringing that data together and spending most of their time doing that, instead spend time visualizing and actually analyzing the data that's there to harness the true power of data um, that you can that you can effectively use. So that's the kind of conversation I think is going to lead to how can we utilize that data through the use of technology to help us get to that goal, to, 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 to become uh, you know, a, a company that can harness the, the power of data culture in general. And that's where Power Platform kind of fits in. So Microsoft Power Platform basically entails four um, you know, prominent applications, uh, one of which we'll kind of discuss today and others which we've discussed in the past and we'll continue to talk about um, you know, being an organization that is a power addict, um, we've got Power BI, and that's the application we're going to focus on today. Uh, and it's basically the business analytical uh, dashboard capabilities that you have within Power BI uh, that we're going to outline. You've got Power Apps, which are, um, you know, application development um, uh uh, components where you can create, uh, you know, canvas apps or model driven apps and be able to, you know, effectively work on uh, different processes, create your own custom apps or, or uh, use templated apps to, to kind of help you get there. There's Power Automate, uh, which basically helps to automate some of your 
processes that may be rudimentary or or transactional in nature, um, and you can actually automate them and 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 essentially become more effective or efficient in in uh, in doing that. You can also set up approval processes and other components as such. And you've got Power Virtual Agents uh, as well, which was basically, you know, the ability for you to create uh, intelligent chatbots um, online uh, with with minimal or no code at all. Uh, and all of these really reside under the um, the Power Platform family in general, and can be easily and seamlessly, you know, kind of uh, put together uh, with existing solutions such as Office 365 itself, or or Azure or Dynamics in general. And and we're going to talk about that link with Dynamics um, uh, more so today. Uh, and you've got the ability for these applications to have a lot of data connectors, and I'll talk about that from a Power BI perspective today as well, um, and and talk about you know the the overall picture of the common data service or data versus which basically shares the the data across these applications seamlessly so you don't have you know you don't have to you know go into one application and have certain set of data and another application and and those applications don't actually speak to one another right so that would be contrary to to the data culture that we're trying to develop here um and so Power BI essentially you know allows you to do the following and this really is the the journey of digital transformation right where you can transform your products right optimize your operations and, and in essence empower your employees at the same time engage your customers this this life cycle and, and and constant you know evolution of digital transformation in general so to summarize at least uh, you know at a high level or introduce um power bi there are um, you know, five key components that I'd like to outline today, and 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 we can relate to these in the demo as well as we uh, as we make note. But real-time dashboard capabilities is a big win for Power BI. Uh, unlike other applications, Power BI is, has the ability to create these live dashboards where you can see real-time data interact with the ver whether it's various reports or various visualizations, which I'll address as well as far as customized visualizations are concerned. So you can create visualizations that that suit your data um, that make sense to you and the data that you have um, to show the different components uh, that you're that you'd like to show um, or visualize or, or um, you know make apparent uh, for for that purpose you have the ability also to integrate uh, with you know other Microsoft family applications as well and I, I kind of addressed this in the previous slide as well but in addition to or to elaborate more on um, you know the ability of Power BI to be embedded within Microsoft Teams for example which we've used as a communication and collaborative technologies um, you know there's telephony systems and all these other components that are part of Microsoft Teams itself and again we've done lots of uh, webinars and, and, and blog articles online regarding all of the applications I'm mentioning today um, as well as its, its, its ability to integrate with you know your existing CRM or ERP applications, right? Such as Business Central being an ERP. So that ability for Power Power BI to do that, you know, without any you know custom uh, uh, integration or effort required, uh, is very very unique to Microsoft and Power BI specifically. And and the ability for you to access that data and those insights wherever you are um, on any device, wherever you go, uh, whether it be on a desktop or online on a web uh, browser. Or, or mobile devices, you can do that. And, and how does that transform your data? So how does Power BI you know, transform your data essentially in these five stages? So you, the first really being the ability for you to get your data and access your data. And, and for you to get your data, there are multiple different connectors uh, and data sources that you can hook up to, a few listed on the screen uh, in, the, in the PowerPoint slide here. But essentially, that data can be transformed and cleaned to be able to uh, work for uh, the, the, uh, the reports or the dashboard visualizations that you're creating. And you can connect any of these data sources um, you know, uh, through your system and create you know, Azure uh, uh, or Power BI data lakes and things like that as well um, to, to help support you in, in terms of this integ integration uh, of data to your system. So Power BI data sources, here's a couple list of Power BI data sources, but literally there are hundreds of, of, of 
built-in data sources that you can uh, you know leverage to help you migrate your data and to be able to use the most common one uh, that we see often is is the ability to use excel uh, in and out as well use excel while you are in power bi um, to help you and and be familiar with some of the um, you know some of the some of the uh, functionality of Excel can also be utilized in in Power BI. Uh, very powerful there. Now that you got your data uploaded and and sourced onto Power BI, you, you want to be able to analyze that data, right? So Power BI actually creates a, a a model automatically and can make those linkages and interactions and relationships uh, with the data that is there. Um, and and this is done without any you know manual effort being involved. Uh, for you to do that. You can also visualize that data, so to the point of creating visualizations that can interact with, um, you know, your your data itself. So it's not I'm not talking about you know bar graphs and 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 pie charts only. You know there are uh, you know different types of interactions and different types of visualizations that you can create. Um, really, the 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 sky is the limit when it comes to these um, to essentially allow your data to. Um, be meaningful, be easily representative, and and share that information uh, across the organization and or um, uh, uh, externally as well. And to that, that leads me, you know, to the next point of essentially publishing that data or publishing that dashboard to to enable you to share the insights that you've captured uh, with other people, whether it be internally and or externally. So there's multiple different ways that you can share that data or share that dashboard uh, with other people. Um, and you could do that online through a web, you can do that within uh, you know, the licenses and we can talk about those components specifically, um, as well as you can you know, have multiple means of integrating and embedding those uh, reports throughout your um, Microsoft solutions as well. So lots of power in terms of where that data can be accessed and by whom. And of course, you can set restrictions and security roles and things like that as well as you need to um, to to empower, uh, you know, the ability for you to do that. Um, Another example is, is, is the sales order report, basically, where you can create and generate uh, reports through Power BI, and these are reports that are outside of your, let's say, Business Central uh, environment as well, as well as use Power BI to uh, to to generate essentially better reports um, if you're having, you know, uh, issues around uh, reporting in, in general. Um, and lastly, of course, we want to be able to collaborate with these with these dashboards that are created in Power BI. And this is where that aspect of how do we engage and interact with multiple systems, multiple users coming into the system uh, and connecting with our data uh, to make use of it um, based on what we have. And of course, in the screen here, I've also shown you a mobile application um, that you can use, and it's a it's a, you know Power BI application uh, that you can download on any iOS or, or Android to be able to utilize and empower your employees to get quick insights, um, be able to analyze that data. And again, here's a screenshot of you know, Power BI that's embedded within a Microsoft Teams channel um, for you to also see and visualize and utilize uh, its power um, uh, across the different applications that you already utilize in micro with Microsoft products. So. Uh, on that side, um, you know, we can deliver those insights, like I said, through through many, many different means. And now, how does that connect specifically to Business Central? And I'll outline maybe a, a few key areas that, that, you know, Business Central really has um, uh, the advantage. And of course, we know Business Central um, uses Power BI in many relationships you know, in terms of building the the, the dashboards and the and the reports and the data that's that's coming in and out of your system, but at the same time, there's ability for you to, um, you know, some Power BI reports you can actually embed within Business Central uh, and and view them uh, in the system without actually having to leave Business Central, go open up a Power BI application and and utilize the um, the reports there. There are obviously more complicated dashboards as well, and you. You get a very very good experience with Power BI um, to be able to generate those and have those uh, even if it's if they are uh, online 
on on websites and things like that as well um, that you can publish. So Power Business Business Central, uh, the capabilities within Business Central also allow you to create uh, predefined uh, Power BI reports or trends or diagrams or any visualizations that can help your uh, uh, um, organization translate and, and again discuss that data uh, and, and to a, to another level. Um, and you also have the ability to um, make custom reports, right? So Power BI and Business Central can work together and collaborate in terms of generating custom reports that can be made available to you uh, that maybe, you know, the system does not generate, uh, you know, out of the box for Business Central. Power BI is also used in order to, you know, not only be embedded um, in Business Central, uh, but it can also be, you know, Business Central data that you can you can you can push into uh, Power BI uh, and display those reports for you in the system as well. And so, for example, that sales order um, that, that, that you saw there was actually built on Power BI using data from, uh, you know, Business Central or another ERP system. So essentially this this mashup or this connection between um, Power BI and Business Central is one that can be very, very natural, um, where you don't even know when you know Business Central is actually utilizing Power BI because the interface and the user interface itself is very, very clean um, and um, you know uh, very, very appropriate for the Microsoft solution. Again, security aspects of things are all present, and all of the full solution is still there. Um, and and I guess with that in mind. I'm going to pass it over to Pierre, who can actually show you some of the components that I'm talking about here and the natural integration between both Power BI as well as um, uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central. So without any delay, Pierre, off to you, my friend. Great. Thank you very much for that introduction, Ziad. I really appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Ziad mentioned, my name is Pierre Menegan, and I'm a technical pre-sales consultant with Encore Business Solutions. And uh, I like beginning all of my demos with, with this particular tip. Uh, if you work with the Microsoft Cloud, a lot of you may not be aware, uh, but one of the things I like doing is uh, using the Microsoft Edge browser, you can add a home button. And uh, so what I do is, uh, I'll just minimize this screen a little bit. So we go to the ellipsis here and just click on settings. And then once there, um, just type home. And then uh, what you wanna do is activate this home button and then map to um, HTTPS myapplications.microsoft.com. And uh, so when you do that, what's going to, to occur is that uh, now, now with this home button, as you're working with the Microsoft Cloud, you can uh, just automatically click it and be routed to this, this launch pad. Now, depending on the applications that you have available to you, uh, we'll determine what uh, items appear in this launch pad. So Power BI is, is one of the tiles that you'll see in there. And then as you connect your environment with Business Central, you, uh, you may need to get your IT department involved if you don't have a Power BI Pro license available. Um, and, and you'll know if your environment is connected when you browse to uh, Business Central and you scroll down on this main screen you'll see uh, either a Power BI report here or it'll be a, a blank area that, that isn't connected yet. And uh, if you go ahead and, and try to uh, select a report, it will initiate that connection uh, the first time and uh, it may pr produce an error. So if that's the case and you have a valid Power BI Pro license from your IT department, then what you need to do is go back to this area here, the My Applications area, and just launch Power BI Pro after you've engaged Business Central. And then uh, what that will do is uh, it will then activate uh, this, this dashboard here. Now you may have to, after doing this, close Business Central and then reopen it. Um, but that, that is what uh, you'll see in this environment. And depending which Power BI reports have been published, uh, you will have access to multiples. I, I currently only have two reports within uh, this environment, but uh, you will uh, have the ability to, to add additional reports as you design them, or if you find any Power BI templates uh, on uh, Microsoft GitHub, for example, and, uh, or within the Power BI community. Um, uh, there's a community.powerbi.com, which is a very um, great re is a great resource for uh, different um, Power BI uh, information. 
And so here's another example of what's called a Power BI application. So as you create a series of uh, dashboards and reports, et cetera, uh, as a report designer, you can then create it as an application and then share it with other users. And uh, this will be available to them in their Power BI, I'll just quickly show you, in their Power BI launchpad. So here is the Microsoft Dynamics 365 app, I use air quotes, um, and uh, basically this is what you're seeing here. So as you share this out to other users, they would have this available in their workspaces and they'd be able to launch it from there. Uh, or even use it from mobile devices and so on. And uh, this information is retrieved directly from uh, Business Central. And uh, you can also drill down and, and see the different uh, costs uh, associated with that. And uh, now you notice that we're brought right into the system where we can engage with the data. So a uh, very powerful tool uh, that unifies your your uh, business intelligence experience, oh, pardon me, just signed out uh, accidentally, uh, unifies your business intelligence experience along with um, your um, ERP system. And so here we can also go, um, pardon me, um, we can also uh, get uh, other uh, items uh, as a mini trial balance, for example, that will show some uh, changes within certain categories that are important to you. And uh, again, you can also click and uh, and activate data slicers by um, uh, by uh, selecting an area and then deselecting it um, to remove the filter. Uh, these will have a lot more relevance uh, once we dive into the other Power BI reports. So um, what I will do is quickly browse here. So this is another Business Central application that's been published and this is a sales dashboard and also a sales dashboard with summary. And there's a number of different visualizations that you see here. There's there's bar charts, there's uh, tree maps, there's uh, regular um, physical maps as well. And so if for example here um, if I look at uh, Winnipeg, Canada, we have uh, the sales available here, and that's demonstrated by the, the size of the, the uh, revenue bubble as well. And then when I click that bubble, it's going to filter out uh, these different views so that you can see what items uh, were responsible for these particular sales activity. And again, this is all connected through that uh, common data service or the, the Microsoft Dataverse as it's been renamed in November. And uh, so whatever details you have within dynam your Dynamics 365 products, whether they be Business Central, customer engagement, et cetera, uh, you're able to go ahead and, and gain access to it uh, from there. And Power BI's visualizations also provide additional dimensions. So if we think about a bar chart, which was historically a two-dimensional type of uh, display, uh, now we're getting additional context within color coding. So if you have, for example, uh, John Haddock Insurance gives you a call and says, hey, I, I'd like to buy more chairs. Well, you can see here at a glance that uh, his color is red. And so there's uh, approximately um, so approximately over $85,000 in overdue invoices. So at a glance, you you have an ability to, to notify the customer that you'd like them to resolve this overdue balance before you go ahead and process their, their next upcoming order. And uh, the dashboards can also include um, these cards as well. Um, so you can't drill down on these. These are for visual purposes. But again, if we kick, click data slicers, it, it always refreshes the data to show you what is being uh, currently displayed within that filter. And uh, th this feature here is a really good one as well. It's uh, currently in preview, but you're able to use it. And this is called Smart Narrative. So if you notice here, it's giving you a summary of what's currently being displayed on the report. Now, if you can continue looking at this Smart Narrative, I'm going to activate some data slicers and you'll see how this narrative is going to change with the data slicer. And if I hold down my control key, I can activate additional data slicers. And uh, so here, if I filter on all of the overdue invoices, then it will go ahead and give us a, what uh, it interprets out of the visuals that are being uh, currently viewed within this report. And you can also, these, these um, pardon me, I need to keep my mouse there. 
these cue cards that are available here, you can also customize these as well. So if for, you think, for, as an example, uh, if you have a total sales figure um, showing, and if we go, well, actually, I'll, I'll just go here, sales by month. So here, if we have this cue card for sales by month, you have the ability to add additional data points that make sense. So if you want to, for example, show your budget uh, for the current month as well, um, to show if you're tracking onto the budget, or if you want to show your year over year growth uh, with that, then you might want to put last year's sales uh, amount uh, in there as an additional bit of information. So again, it's all about making it more accessible to the users so that they're able to drill down to uh, what's important uh, to them. And uh, th this slide here is uh, just to provide a bit of an overview in terms of some of the terminology used for Power BI, but also how you would connect multiple data sources that Ziad had mentioned earlier. And uh, so you could have on-premises uh, data sources, you could have data sources in the cloud, such as Business Central, and uh, there could be other uh, items such as uh, point of sale systems, et cetera, that you'd want to uh, integrate. And a lot of times these data sources have different column names and, and so on. So you need to do a, an ETL process, which stands for ext extract, transform, and load. But you want to do this in a very meaningful way. So this is where data architects become uh, necessary just to make sure that you're extracting the correct data as opposed to just grabbing everything as one big uh, lump and then bringing it up to the cloud. Uh, because you want to make sure that the relationships that you're making with your data are meaningful so that they'll be optimized and able to process those reports uh, in a very, um, um, in, a, in a good way for a user experience. And so here we have uh, external data sources from on-premises and they might go to a, a storage area in the cloud and uh, then you have uh, potentially a data warehouse, it's called Azure Synapse in this example, that you may use Azure Data Factory to, to integrate this data and do that, that ETL uh, operation that we spoke about. And then here, the Azure Active Directory. So if you log into Office 365 in the cloud, then you have a username and password. Uh, you may not be aware, but this is Azure Active Directory, and um, it basically does the security verification to make sure, do you have the ability to access the data to which you are requesting um, from Power BI? And if so, then it goes ahead and it, it displays that information to you uh, in the Power BI dashboard. Now, Microsoft is constantly innovating in their cloud software. You know, they basically deploy um, two new features every day. They update the code every two weeks. And uh, so they've put a lot of thought and effort into Power BI. And this is uh, an Excel spreadsheet that I have as an enclosed data set. And this will demonstrate Power BI's visual storytelling capability. So this, this play button down here is what's called a play access. And my Excel sheet contains uh, data that's going to run over the course of uh, several years and show the evolution of all the different uh, business intelligence companies throughout uh, throughout uh, these these years. So if we look at Tableau, I can go ahead and click on this and it will display the uh, entire evolution of that company. And then here I'll click on Microsoft. And if you're not familiar with Gartner's Magic Quadrant, this is basically showing the um, company's ability to execute as well as their completeness of vision. And so if you think about using this play axis to show, uh, to demonstrate some of the trends that have occurred in your figures over time, you can go ahead and just click this and you'll bring your story to life. And so you can see the evolution of all these different data points that you're working with and uh, how they interact with each other and how they move over time back and forth through the different quadrants. And there's a number of different ways that you can access Power BI as well. And uh, we'll just quickly uh, go here. So this is the, the Q&A panel that uh, uh, Ziad had talked about some plain language queries. So here we have uh, sales by product subcategory. And uh, so here I can, oops, pardon me. So here I can also look at sales by country. And uh, you can also, it's, it's providing um, information as well and uh, in terms of making your queries different. And uh, sales by uh, 
So we'll go sales by period and city. And so again, uh, it, it will give you the data in, in the method it thinks is the most meaningful. And so here I can say, uh, you know, list my locations and it presents the data within a table. And then again, if I want to see these surfaced on a map, it will go ahead and, and bring all of that data to me uh, on uh, a map that uh, is available as a visualization. And so here I can click on uh, any item. Uh, so if I choose Kiev, Ukraine, uh, then it goes ahead and it, it filters out again the, uh, the data based on that selection. These are uh, dimensional uh, or, or key, um, pardon me, this is called a decomposition tree. So if you want to uh, look at the dimensionality of your businesses as well, you can go ahead and add and remove uh, dimensions. So here, if I go ahead and I want to uh, remove forecast planning and go by subsidiary and period, then it automatically drills that data and automatically refreshes it for me. And then if I want to add another uh, data value as well, uh, these particular ones have a light bulb icon attached to them. So what you see there is um, this is from Microsoft's um, machine learning capabilities that are built in. So if I want to see all the low values of uh, these particular items, then I can go ahead and, and drill into that uh, from the machine learning uh, uh, capabilities of the system. So I don't have to really uh, create any formulas that will identify the low value, etc. This is all derived from uh, machine learning. And you also have the ability to uh, connect to other data sources as well. So if we think about some key performance indicators and uh, different visualizations as well. So this is a, a uh, closer map by country. So you can also, um, that way you're not dealing with a global map, you're specifically dealing with a, a country map instead, which may be a lot cleaner for your operations. And again, we're, uh, we're looking at uh, some additional uh, color uh, coding uh, to give you some context within uh, the view that you have. So if we think about the profitability of each individual state, we notice that uh, New York, uh, Texas, and California are quite pro profitable, and Montana is, is not very profitable at this point. However, when you look at uh, Texas's profitability, uh, it doesn't rank very high in the overall um, sales categories. So you can also click on that slicer and then uh, see what items are being sold. Um, by product subcategory, etc. So there's there's a number of different visualizations that may give you additional insights that you might not have had otherwise. And this is another visualization I like showcasing as well because um, we're always interested in, in engaging with our customers and making sure that they're they're satisfied with the services that we provide. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel, which Power BI mimics in a lot of ways in terms of the formulas that it uses and uh, in in the context of this particular dashboard. Uh, I'm also using conditional formatting with a standard uh, traffic light uh, symbolism behind it. So um, you basically can set up some conditional formats. So if you look at these particular gauges at the top, as I click on a data slicer, uh, and they'll change color within the context of whether we've achieved the goal or not, uh, the stated goal at the top. And so this was very straightforward to do. It's just basically creating a set of rules for conditional formatting to change those colors uh, depending on those data values. And we know that also customer engagement in surveys uh, can be a little mixed. And uh, so if, for example, you're a, a services organization, you may want to reduce your or, or increase, pardon me, your customers' uh, engagement with surveys by reducing perhaps the number of questions and focusing on uh, a couple of, of various questions that are important to you. So, you know, if, if, for example, you have an online business, how easy is it for your customers to, to purchase items on your website? Or on a scale of one to 10, uh, how likely would they be to recommend us? Or what's their satisfaction with our pricing model or satisfaction uh, by, uh, by other uh, product quality, et cetera? And so what you can do here is by using Microsoft Forms, you can uh, create a, what's called a streaming data set so that, for example, as the customers activate or, or 
respond to the survey and then go ahead and, and send that through Microsoft Forms, it will stream the data live into Power BI so that um, at any given time, you can look at this dashboard and get a sense of uh, how your customers are, are happy or not happy with your particular services. And uh, then you can also create a number of different visualizations and incorporate them as well. Uh, so again, with bar charts, with tables, uh, if, for example, uh, we look at uh, open work orders by, uh, or pardon me, by duration, we'll do that first. Again, we have a scatter chart with additional details. So you have the, um, the revenue uh, on the, this axis, and then you have the uh, average uh, of booking minutes on this axis. But what you're able to see is uh, you can get, for example, how many times uh, did you need to visit or engage with a customer in order to resolve their issue? So again, you get additional insight into um, this particular chart based on the size of the bubble. So it's all about uh, adding additional information um, to help you understand what's happening within your organization. And again, if you click on uh, one particular bubble, for example, then we can see um, the customer itself and uh, how long the the inspections had had last and how many visits they had etc so again it's it really depends what uh, data you want to showcase and uh, who you want to share it with and the power of of this particular product as well is you can share it with uh, anyone within uh, your organization uh, no matter where they are in the world so it's quite powerful and uh, for, for with that, I will uh, hand it back to Melissa and uh, see if we have any questions. All right, thank you. Just trying to steal, get my screen back here. Can you see my slide? Yep. Yes, we can. Awesome, thanks. Okay, so uh, if anyone has questions, just put them into the question pane. Uh, one did come in just about uh, the recording, and yes, we are recording this, and that will be sent to everybody. Um, I did put a couple links in the chat. So the first link is about uh, getting emails from Encore. So if you want to get our newsletters or product and service emails or info about events and training, then you can sign up there for those. Uh, and also just a note in there about Encore Care Unlimited, which is our um, support plan. So the second link is about is about that if you want to learn about the different features that are involved. Uh, and you can always, of course, contact us if you have any questions about any of those things. So thank you so much, both of you, for all that info today. That was great. And uh, I don't see any questions coming in, but of course, just let us know if you have any. And I guess we can wrap up for today. Thanks, everyone. Take care, everyone.